Hey everybody. So uh, I think this Christmas, usually this, you know, around December we try to do big projects because it's holiday time, but this year I really wanted to focus on just smaller quick stuff because everyone gets in a bind. Sometimes we're like, oh, I gotta make three gifts that I totally forgot about. This is something that I've been making for a long time for family, friends, and they're just leather patches. Um, you can do, they're great use of scrap, they're really, really fun, they're, you can be as simple or as intricate as you want. Um, but they're quick and they're cool. And so today we're just going to make a simple leather peace sign um, patch and there's a really not much to it. The one thing is you can add Velcro to the back of your leather patches so that if what you're putting the patch on needs to go in the wash, you can take the leather patch off because saddle leather doesn't really like the washing machine or the dryer. So I would recommend that if you're going to be doing that. This one's just going on the backpack, so we'll be good to go. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. So all I did to make this pattern is I went online and I found a peace sign picture and I printed it out and then I made this little template thing. So you want to make sure when you're making a leather patch that you leave room for the stitching on the outside for where you're going to stitch it to whatever you're putting it on. Um, or, you know, you put your Velcro on the back. You don't have to do that. This one's going to be stitched on. So I put the peace sign and then I did, I think it was like a quarter of an inch all the way around so that we'll have room to sew this onto um, actually, I think Kayleen decided she was going to put on her jacket, so <laughs> this will be on a jacket. Um, other than that though, just some scrap of 5 ounce leather. We're just going to trace everything out and get it cut out first. So cutting out your shapes obviously is going to be totally dependent on what your shapes are. Um, the peace sign is like a little kind of, kind of weird. So what I'm doing is, because it's got so many crazy angles, I'm just using my punch here to punch out some of them so it'll look like rounded. I can always go in if I don't like it, like this one, I think I'm probably going to just have to go in and cut everything. But this will just get me a little bit of a rounded corner on these two, and now we got to cut the rest of it out. So once we have everything cut out, if you're doing kind of a more intricate shape, it's going to be a little bit haggard looking, um, unless you're really, really, really good with a, with a knife. So what I do is I'm taking some worn out, this is like 150 grit, but you want to use like roughly around 300 grit sandpaper. I'm using this because it's worn out, so it's not going to be too aggressive. I'm going to roll it up on this little plastic tool here. You could also use like a pen or something. And this will just allow me to get in there, and I'm going to just kind of slowly work those edges to get them where I want them and get all the little pieces that are hanging and aren't totally perfect. And you just kind of got to go slow with it, but it goes pretty quickly. So it's kind of a relaxing little thing to do once you've got everything cut out. And you can see we're just kind of smoothing out that curve there. And then we'll make sure that this is nice and straight. It's a little it's a little taken off right there and you just kind of go around and do it in every hole if you have them in your in your pattern so in this one I want this to look kind of vintagey so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some like 400 or 600 grit sandpaper and I'm not going to try to bevel all these little edges in here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to literally sand down the grain of the leather focusing on the edges uh, maybe I'll I'll bevel the outside edge, but on the inside, we're just going to round everything over and I'm not going to worry about sanding the grain, the top grain of the leather, just because this sandpaper is so mild, not sandpapery. I don't know soft? what you call it. Soft, I guess. It's not going to take the grain of the leather off. It's just going to round everything over and then we'll go in and we'll do a little bit of burnishing and we're going to, you guys have seen when I, um, we're going to do our own patina effect. So we're going to use some mink oil, we're going to use some canvas, and we're going to kind of burnish this up so it looks really nice and cool and old. It matches because Kaylina has a badass jacket that we're putting this on. It needs to, now that I know what's going on there, we got to do it, do it justice. Do it proper. Proper yeah. patch. Yes, sir. So then, uh, then I'll go in here and actually I'm going to have to go over here and just take this edge off. All 
All right, so before we varnish anything, um, I'm gonna go in with some mink oil and I'm gonna just douse this thing with it. Now the reason I'm doing that is when we go into burnish, um, if you get gum track on the grain of the leather, it can kind of like seal off the grain and not let the oil sink in. Um, it'll eventually wear out like, in a, you know, a couple days. It's not permanent or anything, but because we wanna make sure this looks nice on video, I am going to just do this first. And I'm also going to oil the edges. These are unsealed, so the mink oil will sink in here, which is also partially why I'm using the liquid instead of a paste. Um, I usually use mink oil though. Mink oil I use for color, and then um, like paste wax or whatever I use to fully nourish the leather. We'll hit the whole piece with some paste wax when it's fully put together. But I'm gonna go in and get all these little crevices too. And I'm gonna be kind of haphazard about it because remember we want this to look old. So if it's uneven color or has a little bit of, uh, we go too heavy in some spots and it stains a little bit, that's what we're actually going for. All right, so this is admittedly not gonna look very good before it's done, but once we get it on the jacket, it'll all make sense. Um, we're just trying to make this piece look old and we are gonna put it on a backing piece I haven't cut out yet. But, so I've gone and kind of burnished everything on the edges a little bit. Now I'm gonna put some gum drag over top and I'm gonna burnish the actual grain of the leather. You've seen me do this a couple times before. And this is basically just what happens to natural veg tan when it's in your pocket for years, but we're just speeding it up. Um, that's a lot of patina is just burnish. So if we take some canvas, we're essentially just recreating, putting it in a pocket, taking it out of pocket, putting it in a pocket, taking it out of a pocket, you know, a whole year's worth of use, I guess. Not, it's not, but we're making a patina. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be real careful. I don't want to false advertise on anything. So I'm gonna do this. Oh, I can complain about, it. I got this nice new shirt to wear on camera. It matches the sweatshirt I always wear. Immediately got edge paint all over it. It's comfortable though, so. So I guess this will just become my signature paint covered shirt for now on. Why not? Everyone needs a workshop shirt. Right? Get it out. It's like a scratch on a new car, so you're not afraid to drive it. Right. Okay, I think that's good. And this will all, like I said, it'll all even out. So now we just have to cut the circle out. See what we got going on now that this is all burnished, and we'll darken this up too. But we're not going to do it till this is on, this is attached because I, I want to burnish this. If we attach this first and burnish it second, we'll leave some light spots in there and it'll look really cool. So, what I've done is I've set my calipers to, or I'm going to set my calipers to a quarter inch because that's the space that I want um, on all sides. And we're going to go around, and this isn't a stitch line, it's just like a just a mark to show us where to line up our inner circle. And then I'm gonna go get my basting tape because we're not gonna glue this, we're just gonna tape it before we stitch it. But you can see with that line, we can just place that and perfectly center it on our second circle. So I'm gonna just do one stitch line in the middle of all of these, so I'm just gonna mark that out. I use my calipers here, and I'm just gonna dial that in to be right in the center, or as close as I can get. And we'll mark our stitch line here, and then we're gonna to have to use a straight edge to mark in the middle of these straight lines. And if it's off to one way or another a little bit, it's not that big of a deal. When I go through and punch, um, this is so thin that I'll just punch a little bit to one side and we should be fine. So I'm gonna use my scratch all. I'm gonna make little marks right where I want the stitch line to go. And then I can use my straight edge. Go like that. And then we'll go here and we'll go here. And we can connect these as well. I think 
we're ready to punch. Alright, so once you have your patch put together, if you're really, really good at centering things, you can use your dividers to make your mark like that. Now, I'm going to do this, but I'm pretty sure I didn't center this circle on another circle perfectly. So it's going to show that I was a little bit off, or a lot of it off, but that's okay. Now, to remedy this, you could either be better at centering, which I should have been, or you can just punch, use your edge of your inside shape and just punch like that. See what I'm saying? So these holes on the outside are gonna to be to sew it onto Kaylee's jacket, um, but I wanted to bring in, this as a much more complicated one to show you on the back. If you do like a bunch of layers, so like I stitched around the piece sign, I stitched twice in the piece sign, it's also bigger, so I was able to get more detail in there. You end up with a ton of stitch lines on the back, um, and that's totally normal. Um, that's all. So these stitch lines that I'm punching now will be for whoever receives the patch to sew it onto whatever they want. Unless you go the Velcro route, in which case you're going to be sewing Velcro on to the back of your patch, however you'd like to do that. And you can see now that by putting, these are the same cut of leather, same piece of leather, but by oiling this one twice, waiting until we have everything layered together, you can see how this one's gonna end up much darker than the bottom layer, which is something that would happen had this been put on brand new and worn in as well. And we're pretty much done with this. And here we go. So this one was really simple, but as we went over before, these are just so fun to use your scraps and go wild. I love when I have a free weekend, a uh, free afternoon, to spend a few hours like making a really intricate little patch. Um, they're just really special, you know, you can do, if you have details that are super small and can't do them out of leather, you can just do them out of your wax thread and use it almost as um, like embroidery. Uh, for this one, Kayleen is gonna pop this on her jacket and maybe we'll be able to throw a picture in at the end uh, if we can get that done before I'm editing the video. Um, but yeah, that's about it. These make great holiday gifts with the holidays coming up. They're a great way to use all your scrap. They're a great way to inject a little more personality we don't do a lot of graphic work, you know? So this is a great way to like, if you have a loved one that has a special interest, you can make a patch for them. And it's a really special gift, I'll be honest. That I get a better reaction to patch out of patches than wallets a lot of the time. So um, I look forward to seeing what you guys come up with. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.